partial differential equations and find out the different derivatives. But what do they actually mean? What does partial derivative and total derivative signify? How it creates a practical difference? Well, in this video, I'm going to show you with examples what is the real difference between partial and total derivative and what effect do they make in terms of calculation. As a result, you will find many concepts of partial differential equations will become clear. My name is Shonak and you are watching this video on my channel Physics for Students. Welcome to this fresh new video, what is the difference between partial and total derivative. Well, because we don't have anything further to discuss in terms of topics, so I would straight away go into the uh, topic that we are discussing. What is partial and total derivative? Well, if you see in mathematics, both partial and total derivatives are concepts which are used to describe how a function changes with respect to its variables. That means if I take this one, the partial derivative, it measures the rate of change of a function with respect to one specific variable while holding the other variables constant. So those which I've written in red are actually important that it definitely denotes the rate of change of a function, but it keeps the other variables constant. If I take the total derivative, it takes into account the simultaneous changes in all variables. That means all at the same time. It describes how the function changes as all the variables vary together. So this is in total what it actually denotes that the basic I would say a layman's definition what is partial derivative with respect to one specific variable here all the variables are changing so the variables would vary together. Now the question is that can we go a little bit deep and understand the real reasons. Now question also is that is it that it only carries the difference? Do they carry any similarity? Let us look up in this part of the video. So what are the similarities? Let us find it first and then we will go into the differences. So you see partial derivative actually measures the rate of change of a function. More or less total derivative also measures the rate of change of a function. Now, this is used to analyze function with multiple variables, right? I'm going to say, if you see into this, this actually carries the, uh, uh, we call it as multivariate functions. So, partial derivatives actually focus on the rate of change of the function with respect to a single variable, while others being constant and this one as it is. Okay, the next thing that comes up is this. Both partial and total derivatives are denote using similar mathematical location, more or less. So, a function f x y z the partial derivative of f with respect to x is denoted by this one curly uh, d del f by del x and the partial derivative of f with respect to y is this curly one del f by del y similarly the total derivative of f with respect to x y and z is denoted by df by dx and the total derivative of f with respect to y is denoted by df by dy both of these has got an important uh, aspect that is the chain rule applies to both partial and total derivative. It allows for the calculation of the derivative of a composite function by multiplying the partial or total derivatives of the individual functions involved. So now that we have seen that it is not only the difference but there are certain similarities more or less using the same kind of a uh, you know uh, uh, notation with a curly d and this one as a straight d. So now we have understood it. Just a point of note if you really want to know the origin of this d curly d delta etc. I've got a very popular video which is there in my playlist difference between delta d and del. You can watch it uh, there. It is there in physics for students. Okay. So first of all, now let us see what is the difference and the best way to understand the difference is to cite an example. Now let us consider a simple example to explain the difference between partial and total derivative. So imagine that we have a function that represents the surface area of a box and this function represents the length and the width and the base of the box and we can write it as this ALW equals to 2LW plus 2LH plus 2WH uh, where obviously A means A surface area, L is the length, H is the height and w is the width. Now let us say we want to understand how the surface area changes with respect to the length of the box while keeping the width constant. In this case we would take the partial derivative of the function, yeah we are keeping the a constant, we will take the partial derivative of the function a with respect to the length it will be del a by del l, simple. 
The partial variability measures the rate of change of the surface area with respect to the length, as assuming that all other variables width and height are held constant. It tells us actually how much the surface area changes when we change the length alone without affecting the other dimensions. So here I have written measures the rate of change WRT means with respect to the length assuming all other variables width and height to be held constant. I mean to say I am not I will uh, give you an example where the values will be cal calculated but this is just to uh, let you know that this is how we do the basic concept partial derivative of a function del A by del L whereas I am differentiating all other variables with width and height of being constant I am taking the partial derivative of A with respect to L that means I am kicking H and W to be constant. Okay. Vis a vis, if I take the same example, I would like to show you what is meant by total derivative. So, total derivative actually is denoted by this one dA by dL gives the overall rate of the change of the surface area with respect to the length taken into account the simultaneous changes in all variables. That is why I have written simultaneous change in all variables in, in, in red. So, as you see, because it takes all the variables which are being changed, that is why it is uh, noted as measures the overall rate of change, not a specific one. So, it considers how the surface area changes when both length, both length and width and potentially also the height vary together. Right? The total derivative accounts the combined effect of all the variable on the surface area. But practically, if you are doing the mathematics, you will see total derivative is a little bit difficult to calculate because we have to take all the variables together. Partial derivative component by component, if you do it, it is uh, rather easy to calculate. So, here is another difference. This is the most important that it is the combined effect of all variables on the surface area when both length and width and potentially the height would vary. You can go back few seconds back to that slide. It was taking only one component into effect. Okay, so from here we can tell that partial derivative measures the rate of change of a function with respect to one variable while keeping other variable constant. It's more or less a repetition, but it is good to uh, recount this. Total variable measures the overall rate of a change of a function with respect to one variable, taking into account the simultaneous change in all variables. Now, uh, the uh, example that we just saw, uh, saw uh, the derivative of del A by del L, actually what it shows, this one, the rate of change of the surface area with respect to the length assuming width and height to be fixed and dA by dL shows that the overall rate of change of surface area with respect to the length considering changes in the all the dimensions of the text of the box. So, all these things are varying. Right. Now, we have seen a more or less tentative, easy, a non-mathematical without values understanding what is the difference between partial and total. Let us see an example which carries some uh, values so that it will be easier. We will go ahead with the same example. I will take a length as 3, width as 2 and height as 5. And what I am doing is that I want to calculate, will differentiate the volume function of the box with respect to the variable separately. Don't, no, don't get confused. The earlier one was, was the surface area. In order to make the calculation easier, I have taken the volume length. So, volume is obviously the L w into uh, W into H. This is the uh, general, uh, I would say, equation where we calculate the uh, pa partial derivative. So, first we would do the partial derivative of V with respect to L. Uh, that means it uh, gives us a rate of change of the volume with respect to the L. So, I would just plug in the values W into H equal to 2 multiplied by 5. It will be equal to 10. Similarly, the uh, partial derivative with V with respect to W denoted by del V by del W gives us the rate of the change of volume with respect to the width. Right. So, we will write this one. I will plug in the values 3 multiplied by 5 and it will give 15. Right. Now, the third one, the partial derivative of V with respect to H gives a rate of change of the volume with respect to height. So, you saw that right now it was partial derivative with respect to width, then the length and then the height. So, we are doing component by component. So, we get del V by del H. Then this is the rate of change of volume with respect to height. We plug in the values 3 multiplied by 2 and it gives to 6. So, what we deduce finally is that the rate of change of volume with respect to the length, that means one unit has been changed, it will give to 10. The rate of change of volume with respect to width is this one, which is 15. And the rate of change of volume with respect to height is this one, we got it 16. 6. Now, this is basically uh, three uh, you know, dimensions, length, width and height. We have calculated the partial derivatives. 
right with taking one thing into account let us see how do we calculate the total derivative okay so calculating the total derivative of the volume v with respect to a particular variable we consider the combined effects of all variable so this is the way in which we write dv equal to the partial derivative multiplied by dl then the again the second component partial derivative multiplied by dw with then the second third component of the partial derivative multiplied by dh right so we assume we assume that we are changing the height uh, i would say the length by 0 0.1 dw by 0 0.2 and height with minus 0 0.3 why because uh, until and unless we change something i won't be able to show you in the equation so here it goes 10 multiplied by 0 0.1 15 multiplied by 0 0.2 and you can check the calculation maybe i'm right or wrong whatever it would be 2.2 but the basic idea is that this 10 this 15 and this 6 these are the values which are taken from the earlier equation which equation where we calculated the partial derivatives keeping one thing constant that is 10 15 and 6 okay so what we see from here finally is that you see this del v del this gives us the rate of change of volume with respect to each dimension independently this is very important each dimension independently on the other hand when we take the total derivative dv it takes into account the combined effects of all dimension changing simultaneously and these are the changes so dv equals to 3.2 whatever the value uh, that we have got uh, let us check on the values uh, just a second yeah it should be uh, yeah this is a correction it won't be 2.2 it would be 3.2 it would be 2.2 right so what it means that this means that we increase the length of the box by 0 0.1 increase the width by uh, 0 0.2 and decrease the height by 0 0.3 the volume of the box changes approximately to 2.2 right so this is basically the meaning so these three partial derivatives with the th three dimension keeping one constant is that if i change 0 0.1 and if I change the width by 0 0.2 and I decrease the volume by 0 0.3, approximately the units will change by this value 2.2. Okay, now that we have seen this, like can we see it in a more of a function? So finally, let us see what it means. See, if, if I can take a kind of a function f x comma y uh, x plus 3 y, so we need to take a, a, a derivative with respect to each variable while treating other are constant. So I am calculating again the partial derivative using a function. Earlier I have done using a box, now I am doing using a function. So we differentiate x square plus 3 y with respect to y, treat y as constant and we know the derivative of x square is with respect to x is 2x, so we get this. Again, we do the partial derivative with y, that is del f by uh, del y, and uh, uh, we differentiate x squared plus 3y with respect to y, treat y as constant, and we know the derivative of 3y with respect to y is 3, and we get this one. Then we again go forward, and this one, which means that every unit change in x, the function f will change by 2 times the value. This means that if we calculate uh, uh, yeah, so this is where now what does it imply is that if we evaluate del f by del x and take a change of x equals to 3 then obviously it will be 2 multiplied by 3. Why it is so? Because it, it shows that the value uh, of unit change in x will be 2. So if I get any variable or any function which always is 3 I will always multiply it by 2 and get the value of 6. So this implies that x increased by 1 unit, the function f increased by 6 units, obviously assuming y remains constant. And what does this signify? 0 plus 3 equals to 3, which means that every unit change in y, the function f will be changed by 3. That means if I take del f by uh, del y, y equals to 3, finally this means that y increases by 1 unit, the uh, function f increases by 3 units assuming x remains constant right so first one which shows the value to be 2 if i take plug in any function and multiply that it will always be multiplying by 2 and whatever be the result this uh, implies that you increase by 1 unit it increases by 6 units or whatever and this one means that every unit change in y the function y f will be changing 3 why because the value is 3 whatever you plug in it will be 3 right so now let us see how we can find the total derivative simple we need to differentiate the function with respect to both x and y so we take the first a partial derivative of f with respect to y and we get this one which is 2x we have already got it just showing with its steps taking the partial derivative of f with respect to y is df y dy equal to 3 at respect to x is 2 
So, the total derivative of f x y is given by this one and what we get is 2 x dx plus 3 dy. So, the total derivative of f x y x squared plus 3 y is equal to d df equals to 2 x dx plus 3 dy. So, you can see how we calculated the partial derivatives and how we plugged in the value and how we see that using a small experiment we can see that how much change it happens and this is how we also calculate the total derivative. So, a quick summary before ending the program uh, video, what is the total and partial derivative? We have seen that. Similarities we have seen, we have seen example using a cube and we have also seen example using a function. So, this completes our discussion and the topic of today. What is the difference between total and partial derivative? I am thankful for those who have watched this video. Thank you very much for watching and supporting me. Please do subscribe to my channel Physics for Students. Click on the bell icon to get all the notification from Physics for Students. You can contact me at this email ID and you can also uh, you know, subscribe and put up your comments in this uh, exclusive channel which is based on Einstein's general theory of relativity. You can also follow me on my Instagram, Facebook and LinkedIn profiles. Thank you very much for watching this video. Please do let me know in the comments. What do you feel and what is your opinion about partial and total derivatives? Are there any other way or any other differences? Thank you for watching. We will be soon back with few more interesting videos. Goodbye.